Liberté is set in a bizarre alternate history where the French Revolution has been interrupted by the arrival of Lady Bliss, a gargantuan Lovecraftian creature who decided to gatecrash the coronation of Prince Philip, murder the bishop and leave France without a king. Taking inspiration from the real history, well to a point obviously there weren't many, 50 foot naked plant women in 18th century France and I checked. The story follows René, a resurrected warrior created as a servant to Lady Bliss. It being a roguelite, this is the function by which you'll return to life each time. With every new incarnation, René must travel the streets of Paris, choosing which faction to side with. There's the church, the tribe, the prince and the rebels, which seem to be the narrative choice anyway. Most of your primary allies are part of the rebels, such as Anna and Maximilian. The isometric combat is slick and fast paced, arming you initially with only a basic attack and a dodge which you can turn into an invasive roll with a long press, but you unlock more and more skills using Liberté's fairly unique deck building system. Each deck can contain up to 40 cards including dupes. To begin with you have a ranged, melee and rogue deck, but you'll very quickly be customising your own. As you venture out on behalf of Lady Bliss seeking answers to question after question, you can choose a different deck with each run. You can build them however you like, but you can only take up to two of any card. These are both active and passive skills which will auto assign to one of your buttons. The selection is impressive with over a hundred to find or craft throughout. From a single powerful pistol shot to summoning a lightning storm or healing your wounds, the variety is astounding. There are also items such as bombs, poison flasks and food that convey various benefits, sometimes for the duration of the run. In order to play a card you'll need mana, a resource gained primarily from burning unwanted cards, though this can force some tough decisions when you're low on mana and desperate. Combat feels a lot like, say, Diablo, as you mix and match these skills to gain distance, deal damage or stay alive. Instead of a timer, skills require a certain number of hits on an enemy to recharge. It's a fantastic system that promotes active play instead of just hanging around while you wait for a cooldown, and it's something I'm sure we'll see in more games going forward. The only real downside to combat is that now and then I found my character would just pause or a button command wouldn't register and I'd suffer damage. This is a major issue later as healing items are quite hard to come by. As you progress, you'll unlock new skins for René. There are three more, and while they all play differently at a basic level, Anna, for example, uses dual pistols instead of a melee weapon, you will switch back to René for character interactions and you'll always talk in René's voice. It's a bit weird to be honest, but often you won't survive long enough to fret about it. The bliss gets worse and worse as you play. This bizarre corruption gets into people and animals and can produce deranged zombies or monsters. Periodically you'll come upon a statue of Lady Bliss and you can choose to enter her domain to battle the monsters she produces or unleash the bliss upon the city, causing your enemies to get stronger but boosting Renee's connection to the magic. Entering the bliss will put you up against high level enemies and take some serious resolve to get through. Each time you complete an act of the campaign you'll receive a bliss curse and it's only here that I felt the difficulty skewing against me. These curses can make your run an actual nightmare, adding damage effects to enemies, causing them to come back as zombies or fleshy in maggot swarms and these curses stack up to an insane degree and they just don't feel balanced by the cards in your deck. Perhaps the biggest issue with Liberté is the lack of variety in locations though, particularly early on. Even advancing through Axe Siege you return to the same streets of Paris over and over. It mixes up bosses and events, objectives, enemies and which vendors you come across, but for a solid three hours of play one time I played the same stretch of Parisian street, the same cathedral, the same Lovecraftian gross bliss gardens and it really did start to grate. As a result it's probably a game best played in shorter sessions. You can always opt to play local more multiplayer too though if you like. This makes it feel considerably more arcadey though the overall thrust of the gameplay doesn't change. If anything the screen just gets much busier and spotting your character among the enemies and attack effects can be a bit of a challenge. Like Hades, the story in Liberté continues as you play. You'll often visit the same areas and talk to the same characters, revealing more and more of the story each time, and every run will give you multiple chances to choose between the four factions to earn favour and complete challenges. Favour is used to unlock crafting materials to forge new cards from blueprints, or unlock new skins or cards. Everything you do unlock persists through incarnations, and so there's always a sense of progression, and you can continue earning favour and unlocking items and cards even after the campaign story is done. 
Liberté feels unique. Deck building and isometric combat may be nothing new, but this combines the two wonderfully well. The story is intriguing, the characters are well written, if not always well acted, and the combat is fast, smooth and rewarding. It does occasionally glitch and certainly needs more variety in location throughout, but besides that, Liberté is an exciting, fresh adventure in a compelling world and deserves to put developer Super Static well and truly on the map, and for that reason, I'm going to score it an 8.5 out of 10. The accused minister is a frequent guest of the cafe just around the corner. Hi there, hope you enjoyed that review of Liberté from Superstatic and Anshar Publishing. If you did, please hit like and subscribe, maybe tag the bell icon too, so you're kept up to date with everything we post going forward. In the meantime, I've been Mick Fraser for God is a Geek, and you guys have been lovely. Bye.